Welcome, my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are joining from. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much. And remember. The people of the Southeast have never tasted presidency in Nigeria. And now the power is due back in the South. Equity demands that it be ceded to the people. We cannot continue to demand that the Bo people remain in Nigeria while we are at the same time continue to brutalize, to brutally marginalize and exclude them from the power dynamic. Peter will be the person of the construction that the federal has decided to support and to back is the man we trust to restructure the country back to the to federalism on the assumption of office. We will not compromise this principle of justice, equity, and inclusiveness because one of our own, Ashwa Yuala Tinubu, is a frontline candidate. It is on this principle we condemn the PDP for sponsoring Atiku Abubakar, a northern Fulani Muslim, to succeed General Muhammad Buhari, another Fulani Muslim who enjoyed the labor movement, students, youth organizations, women associations, and every institution whose foundation is built on fairness and justice to join hands in this task of exploding a democratic government by supporting Peter Obi. If we are sincere and honest about keeping Nigeria together in peace, the slogan as for should be to keep Nigeria one, everybody should be obedient compliant. Thank you for staying with us. Well, to have a conversation around that, which you have just seen and heard, we have Buiga Adejimo with us. He is a is an Afeniferi chieftain and a member of the National Caucus and Exco of Afeniferi. Thanks for joining us this morning, sir. It's good to be back here again. Um, tell us about that uh, press conference. What informed that decision? We had this world press conference yesterday. And looking at the whole idea of having to go to the press and inform the world of our decision is just in the culture of Afeni Ferry to articulate its views and to put across the prescient issues that Afeni Ferry have always stood for in all of our 71 years. What happened yesterday was just putting together all that Afeni Ferry since inception has always stood for, which is true federalism, which is true representation, which is about equity, which is about standing on the high moral ground, which is about making the unity of this country the paramount thing that should be of concern to everyone. And if we are going to have to live in harmony, in unity, then they have, there will have to be a balancing of the ethnicities and in giving opportunity and liberty to every citizen. Uh, tracing our trajectory uh, right from 1946, where we had uh, 
the Richardson Constitution, the McPherson Constitution, to the Littleton Constitution of 1954. The other constitutions have been unitary. We fought for, at the London Conference, a situation where the multi-ethnicity, uh, the way we are uh, put together, different religion, different ethnicity, different languages, would only make a whole lot of meaning if all the component parts feel comfortable, that we have confidence in the system, that we have a constitution that caters for all of us. And the only way we can do that is to have a federal system. Uh, uh, one of our rival leaders, one of the founding fathers, uh, uh, Dr. Namdi Adiziki, we came back from that conference. Uh, if, if you have your archives here, you can check. On the front page of the newspapers coming from London, they said it is federalism for, for Nigeria and nothing else will matter. And any time we deviate from that, uh, any time we take our, ourselves away from that and pursue other things, that is when trouble occurs. We must make sure that for the continued existence of this corporate uh, uh, Nigeria, everyone must have a sense of belonging. Nobody should have a sense of entitlement. And when it has to come to power, every block must be given the opportunity to be able to present a candidate that would unify, that would signify, and that would have to conform with the essence of federalism. That is what we did yesterday. Well, you know, there are those who wonder why has it taken a fair ferry this long, uh, given that over the past, is it uh, for eight years or seven years now, um, the, the power structure in the country uh, has been as it is. The president is northerner, the vice president is Yoruba, the senate president is from the north, the deputy senate president is from south-south, the, the speaker of the house is Yoruba, and the deputy speaker is from the northern extraction. None of them is really from the southeast, as you, as you put it. You said it all. And that, I'm just asking, why has it taken this long for this agitation, so to speak, by Afeni Ferry? Why not before? The, the truth of the matter is that Afeni Ferry has always said everything that you have just said, but perhaps in different forms and languages, wherever it will occur for us to say so. We never shied away from it. Even when President Obasanjo was in power, we still demanded for equity. We still demanded for what the 19th Constitution lacked. We didn't say it was, oh, the Yoruba stone, and then we'll keep quiet. We forced President Obasanjo to embark upon this exercise of looking at the Constitution and working on the Constitution and making it truly federal. If not for the third term agenda, President Obasanjo was right on his way. And if you look at the history of how it all happened, right back to the Okuta panel, Papadi Banjo said to the whole world, if this 1999 constitution is to subsist, then we cannot guarantee the continued existence of Nigeria. That prompted the Obasanjo uh, 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 administration to do that. And again in 2014, we were behind the idea of the CONFAB. And what will be the idea of the CONFAB? Balancing equity, making sure that every opportunity abounds to the federating units to be able to present the best they, they have in offices. That is exactly what the CONFAB was about. So we've always spoken. We've well, always spoken. And we will continue to speak for as long as we remain at Fenny Ferry. Uh, make no mistake, we have a very strong foundation. Uh, if you build something on nothing, it is not going to work. But ours is built on the solid structure of Papa Bafibi Awolowo and the founding fathers, which included Papa Ayo Adebanjo. Haven't looked at the whole situation as it occurred as at that time, and coming to even putting together when there was no Google, Papa Awolowo wrote about 16 books. Go and check all of that which Adifeni Ferry holds as ideal. The ethics of having to play politics, the ethos of the Omolu Abi that is incorporated in the Afeni Ferry. And in all those books, what you will find will be equity. Papa Wolowa actually predicted the emergence of an Ijo president. 
how could Afedi Fere have been anything different from the trajectory that have become part of us, embedded in our soul, that you have seen yesterday? Okay. But then you also know, of course, that there's been some reaction, some backlash, if I can't use the word, to that decision yesterday. Um, one of it is uh, by the uh, Lucy led Afedi Fere in an interview that said, look, that... Uh, the leadership, you know, that made that declaration yesterday has hijacked, personalized, and privatized Sorry, the Afeniferi who, who that? name. Uh, that's what the olusi led faction of Afeniferi. Well, olusi led Afeniferi. That's what I, I, I wouldn't know about that. Okay. Uh, what we know is that there's only one Afeniferi. Okay. We've had Afeniferi, uh, Papa Olo as leader, Papa Ajasin who took over, Papa Adesanya, Papa Fashion, now Papa Adebanjo. I wouldn't know of any other Afeniferi. Okay. But <clears throat> is that to say that you are not aware that there are objections in some quarters? There will always be objections. Okay. Why would there not be objections? People have all manners of uh, what you might call influences. Uh, you can't take that away from the polity. But again, if anyone uh, is after liberty, but then, in your pursuit of liberty, you go after self-aggrandizement. Then you deserve neither. If you are going to look at uh, the present political situation, in every aspect of our lives, what do we have? We have brokenness. We have brokenness in economy. We have brokenness in the polity. We have brokenness in the politics. We have brokenness that has resulted into terror. And why would we have all of this? The lure of the, of the, of the looker. The people are pursuing other interests, different from the interests of serving and making sure that we have a successful nation. How, how do you convince anyone that there isn't any interest, so to speak, for the Afeni Ferry that you are speaking for even now. Because at the end of the day, it's always about interest. That's what they say. It is self-evident what we are doing. If you want to be about those who think it's about ethnicity, uh, then of course we are not going to be true to self. We are not going to be different from those who want to perpetuate themselves in power then we are going to be no different from those who have a sense of entitlement that we are saying it is wrong. We're talking of federal character. So it is self-evident that the only interest we have is to serve the common man, is to bring unity. Otherwise, then we'll make it a Yoruba thing. There are three, at least three Yoruba presidential candidates. Uh, the, the, the SGP has uh, Mr. Debayo Adewale who happened to have been the very first secretary of the OPC. And, of course, everybody knows the relationship between the OPC and, and, and the Afeni Ferry. But it is not about ethnicity. It's not about where we come from. It's not about presenting a Yoruba because that would not be fair. In 1999, we had President Obasanjo of the Yoruba. Eight years of him. We had three years of Yaradwa. Thereafter, we had five years of the South-South. Then it went back to the north again, eight years of Obwari. In between that, we have eight years of a Yoruba vice presidency, and then you expect a Feni Ferry. With all that we have gone through, with everything that we have said that have come true, it is only when people do not listen to us. And I want you to go back in history. It is only when people don't listen to us, it is when people deviate from the norm that the Founding Fathers put together in making sure that what is entrenched is the true federalism, that Nigeria goes astray, that things go bad. We've always maintained that posture of standing on that high moral ground, and we won't ever shift. It is when we tell Nigerians, please, observe this. Other countries will be so proud of their founding fathers, they will stick to the tenets that have put them together. It's only here that people get us in such. But we keep reminding them, this is the basis upon our coming together. Anytime we move away from it, that is when we have trouble. So how can it be self-serving? We are not serving anyone. We are only serving this nation. 
if we want to have something to accrue to ourselves, then of course let a Yoruba man be there. And then, of course, is either going to be my brother, my friend, or somebody we grew up together, and all of that put together. But that is not going to, going to serve anyone. That will be service to self. Afeni Fede is about service to others. There is also the word out there that you know, there was no meeting. There was no place where Afeni Fede sat down to make this, this decision. There was just one person who made the decision on behalf of everybody and called a press conference. Why should I answer that question? Well, I, 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 I'm thinking, is somebody part of us who is saying that or somebody who is on the outside? Are you in the same organization with me, the same Afeni Ferry, where yesterday um, the deputy leader of Afeni Ferry, Kabi Esioba Olaiton, Oladipo Olaiton, who has spent no less than 50 years in Afeni Ferry, was sitting next to the leader? Was it about an Afeni Ferry that is not in full unison? And you had the Secretary General of Afeni Ferry, Chief Shola Ibisheni, sitting by the left-hand side of Pa Ayuade Banjo. Or are we talking about Chief Shukwosho who, of course, is the treasurer of Afeni Ferry? Everybody knows Chief Shukoshun. Everybody knows his father. His father was one of the founding fathers of the Afeni Ferry. Or are you talking about those who sat at the feet of Papa Ulawa, Dr. Bushunaya, uh, Engineer Bayou Adeneko, who were all there with the leader yesterday? So why would, why would I want to demean Afeni Ferry or demean myself by succumbing to such uh, uh, a very derisory, very laughable question? Well, there is Why? also the, the there's this partnership that's been on with uh, between Afeni Ferry and other social cultural and social political groups all across the nation. The South and the Middle Belt for, uh, Leaders Forum, the Ohaneze, and the rest of them. Uh, is there such partnership on this particular decision of Afeni Ferry? For instance, is Ohaneze on the same page with you? Is the SMBLF leadership also on the same page with you? I'm happy you asked that question. You see, people's optics and intellect should be open to what is going on around them. Uh, at times, we look at things and we don't see. Uh, there's nothing we do that is not in the open. Uh, in 1964, before even Papa Ola went to jail in 1963, there had been an accord between the action group and the SNC of Opera. The letter Papa Olawa wrote to Ironsi about his wrongful incarceration had it all there, where he was being told that renounce your uh, alliance with the NCNC and then you won't go to jail. Uh, we had uh, uh, DM Okwara campaigning in, in Yoruba land in 1964. We had Papa Olo picking Philip Umiadi as his vice presidential candidate in 79. We had Mama Odinamadu, who was the first vice president of the UPN. One of the spokespersons of, of the UPN in those days was Andy Buman. We had MCK Ajuli Chuku, who was the secretary of Afeni Ferry. So why would people not look at all of this and see a trajectory? Uh, a normal, uh, uh, logical, sequential progression uh, of the Afeni Ferry with the Igbo. It's always been there. But let me tell you a story. In 2015, going towards 2015, Afeni Ferry came out and said, do not vote for Buari. Again, like I said, it is when they don't listen to us that people go astray. And we had our reasons. Knowing fully well that nothing was going to, nothing positive was going to happen with Buari, in 2016, Papa De Banjo formed what we call the Yoruba Summit Group. About 42 Yoruba groups came together. And the idea was, it's only going to be about restructuring that could save this country. And we had that rally in 2017 at Adamasina, in Ibadan. We had a governor, uh, Ayodele Fayoshi, then all the other governors sent their representatives, including uh, uh, the vice president who sent Ujudu to that gathering. It was even uh, an APC man 
Niyi Akintola San, who moved that motion at that Ibadan declaration that the only thing the Yoruba would demand, the minimal, irreducible element that we will hold on to, to continue to be part of this uh, uh, union, is to have restructuring. Now, at that meeting, Afeni Feri invited the Ohanese under the, the, the uh, uh, leadership of uh, Chief Nian Wodo. They came, they not only came, they came with their cultural troops to entertain us at Adamasiba. So the Igbo came, they felicitated with us on that day. The Pandev came and felicitated with us on that day. They addressed the, the, the gathering. Chief Nian Wodo did. The leaders of the South South did. Leaders of the Middle Belt did. 2017. And that was the beginning of what we call the SMBLF. So why would people not see all of this? Or do you, did they think that we were joking? Now we couldn't have been joking, and I'll tell you why. Everywhere you go, the news is bad. The news feed is talking about Yahoo Yahoo. The news feed is talking about rituals. The news feed is talking about graduates who cannot get jobs. The, 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 the society is broken. And we are leaders. We cannot continue to allow uh, what, of course, will be the inevitable uh, if we do not stem the tide of destruction. So we formed the SMBLF to be able to take care of the future of our children. And in everything that we have done in five years of SMBLF, maybe you are seeing the culmination of it now. Because every month we meet and we deliberate and we take decisions. And these are decisions that are devoid of self. These are the decisions to take our people out of whatever has become the uh, very bad state in which we found ourselves, in economy, in education, in everything that is going wrong. The, the question I asked you, sir, is are they on the same page with you on this decision? Because I would have expected if that were the case, maybe you would have invited some of them to... Oh, of course them. they are with us. Um, before our own uh, uh, declaration, before our own conference of yesterday, press conference of yesterday, uh, Dr. Pogu of the Middle Belt had come out to say that the Middle Belt is supporting Obi. And, and when I hear people talk about, oh, or, I, or has not endorsed Obi, I find that very laughable. You know why? Does a father adopt his own biological son? Does a father adopt his own biological son. Does a father it's somebody then else that will come and adopt your son just, if he wants just, to. On that, does a father then deny his own biological uh, oh, son? Oh, has not denied Obi. No, 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 I'm not saying that because I remember when, the, you know, before or was it during the Obasanjo, you know, era at the time, Afeni Ferry wasn't particularly fully in support of an Obasanjo presidency at the time. You know, it's only going to be about principles. It's only going to so be there about. Could be a time uh, when there was a time we had a, a, a sort of understanding with President, or President Obasanjo, uh, even in, inside and outside of, of government. You, you, you might even see uh, our leaders with Obasanjo at some point. It happened. Uh, I was there when uh, uh, former President Obasanjo came to Akure to see Pashmashanti. I was there when he came to see Paade Banjo in, in, in Leki. So there will always be areas where when these ideas, ideals, principles that we hold there, when it becomes universally acceptable to everyone. What, what was the point of difference between the, the president of Asanjo while in office and Afeni Ferry at the time? Oh, very good question, and I thank you for that. All we wanted was true federalism. All we wanted for the, was for the country to be restructured. And it didn't matter who was president. As at that time, all we needed, uh, right from the trauma of, of June 12, was to have confidence put back into the nation because certain parts were traumatized, certain people were trampled upon, values actually were trampled upon, and we wanted our people to live in dignity. All we wanted was a constitution that was our own. We were not actually part of this 1999 constitution. In fact, President Obasanjo himself did not see that constitution until the day it was sworn in. And all we wanted, as at that time, was to have a rethink about that constitution. We had predicted, like I said, that nothing good was ever going to come out of that constitution. So we remain in engagement, wanting that constitution to be changed or to have a broad 
uh, uh, situation in which all the nationalities will sit down together and be able to form a constitution of our own, something close to what happened in 2014. So we had that engagement with President Obasanjo. We had it with President Jonathan as well. So now that this is where we are, this is where we have found ourselves now, there are those who have also asked the question, wait a minute, campaigns don't start until 28th. This press conference is a campaign. What do you say to them? Campaigns will still start in, well, in 24 hours. Yes. So? But the, it would seem like the con press conference was before the campaign really started and was frontally saying, everyone should vote for a particular person? That is the right thing to do. Uh, are we going to wait until the campaign starts? We've done our homework. But we just we wait just, really we, until we, the campaign We just starts. did not just um, come to a sudden decision. Uh, it was a process. We had done all that we needed to do, right in the glare of everyone. Uh, the SMBLF invited Peter Obi to part at your evangelist house. All the leaders of the SMBLF were there. And at various levels of interaction, we had met with these candidates. And we've been able to interrogate these candidates. We've been able to come to certain conclusions. First, it's more about equity. It is the idea of making sure that no uh, part of, the, of this um, uh, uh, union is left behind. And then we now found in this particular candidate uh, the attributes that we will see in what we want to see uh, in Nigeria going forward. Uh, restructuring, equity, a stem in the wastage in government. We have all manners of issues. How do we survive? A situation where what we earn is not even enough to pay our debts. Has anybody looked at the wastage in government? Who is talking about the wastage in government? Who is talking about stemming it? Peter Obi, has any of the other candidates campaigned against corruption? Campaign against? Against corruption. Any of the other candidates? Have you, have you heard them say even one word about corruption? We, Peter Obi has been the one that is consistent in all of these things that we believe are germane to making sure that we have something that we can hold on to as hope for the future. We have the Oroi Sayed report, for example, that said that we do not need 44 uh, uh, ministries, that said we do not need 400 parastatals. Has any of the other candidates said anything about that? In which case, we are talking about having to spend so much more than what we earn. So why are we not looking at what is going on presently, how government is constituted, what is making up for the wastages? This is the only candidate that is talking about it. So why would he not catch our attention? Perhaps it's because, uh, perhaps others are not talking about it yet because campaigns haven't fully started. And for all that it's worth, we we'll also remember that not too long ago, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party also came up with a blueprint and mentioned some of the issues that you have raised. So, uh, We have a, a situation in this country. We have a situation uh, that is almost ludicrous, melancholic. People were even talking in 2015 that a candidate didn't even have to bring out a certificate. A NEPA bill would be enough. People did not interrogate anything. People simply believed whatever they were being told. And we ran into all of that, which has plumbed the Naira from 197 to 715. We, we, we've gone through diesel from 120 liter 120 naira per liter to almost 1,000 naira per liter, based on the fact that we did not do the right thing. Now, again, people are saying, oh, we still have time to ask, to interrogate. Where is the time? Is it when they are on the campaign field, going from place to place, that you are going to have the time to look at what each person is bringing to the table? 
Now they've gone around the country doing their own primaries. What are they telling people? They've had interviews here and there. We've seen gaffes. The, the, the social media feed is full of gaffes. People making certain uh, uh, statements of employing 50 million youths, which is, well, you know what it is. It, we have all the evidences right in front of us. Mm. Are we going to simply ignore them like we ignore them in 2015? Okay, that's a very good question and a good place for us to take it off when we return from this break. Thank you so much for your patience to watch from the beginning to the end. I hope you have learned something from the video you have just watched. The video you have just watched is to bring information to your doorstep and for educational purpose. It is not to demonize anybody. Let us watch continuously and see who can be able to make a sense out of every nonsense we are seeing. We must continue. We move. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. They will kill us. Kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra is here. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please kindly subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you notify each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you and remember us. Bye bye. See you again. <laughs>